activating and escalating public information. The purpose of this training is to demonstrate how public information should be activated in an event, how it could be organized, and how it could be escalated during an event in which there is a high demand for public information needs. The resources that we'll focus on today are located within your FEP, your Public Health Emergency Plan, specifically under the section titled Emergency Public Information and Warning, or EPIW. The four tools that we'll focus on are the Operational Checklist, the protocol for establishing a JIC or a GIS, a scalable JIC GIS diagram, and the tiered response protocol. When public information is needed, who technically is the lead? According to the incident command system, it is the public information officer. If the PIO has not been activated, that duty then falls back on the shoulders of the incident commander. In general, your day to day communication protocols should be followed until they can no longer meet the needs of the public information demand. So one of the things that you want to ask yourself is, what are the triggers that go from day-to-day -day communicational operations to emergency response communication operations? By referring to the checklist, which should be the first document underneath this capability within your FEP, you can see that there are some pre-identified activation thresholds. As always, you are encouraged to modify or add local thresholds as applicable. The triggers that are identified are noted on this slide and in general should be considered if you are involved with multiple agencies, if incident command or unified command has made this capability a priority, if you're working with a non-traditional partner, if multiple jurisdictions are involved or multiple levels of government, if other sections of your plan have been activated, if your agency or jurisdictional EOC has been activated, or if there is a surge in public information requests, either through your local public health agency or through your traditional 911 system. So now that we've activated, what happens next? In emergency response, your public information officer works through a conduit known as either a JIC or a JIS. So a joint information center, which is a physical location where the media comes for briefings and or statements. More commonly, we're using the term GIS or a system, which is usually virtual or technology based. You should have a plan in place to be able to use both. So how do you make a JIC or a GIS? And again, if you refer to the tool within this capability of protocol for establishing a JIC or a GIS, it will walk you through the suggested protocol for activating both. For people that are visual learners, there's also a regional joint information center diagram that talks about the process of escalation in terms of the public information needs would start local, they would reach horizontally, and if they are still overwhelmed, then they would reach vertically, in this case up to the regional medical coordinating center. Some examples of either a JIC or a GIS are your pre-identified jurisdictional media rooms or press rooms. A uh, simple teleconference could be an example of a JIC. More commonly, we're seeing web-based meetings such as Adobe Connect, go-to meetings, or secured chat rooms such as Web EOC. They can be as simple as, again, a teleconference, or they could be very complex, up to password-protected web-based meetings. As always, you start local and you expand as needed. If you can handle the public information needs locally, you don't need to do anything else. If you can't, you're encouraged to recruit other local public information officers, whether it be from law enforcement or fire or local hospital. In essence, what you're doing is creating a risk communication team. However, you may still be overwhelmed even after capturing all of those resources. This is where the tiered response protocol would come into play. The tiered response protocol is a document within your FEP that you can refer to. In essence, what it allows you to do is to request coordination and support from regional response partners. 
Within this tiered response protocol, you will be asking to request tier three activation, which will trigger the regional medical coordinating center staff, and they can support you in this case with your public information needs. We can provide a virtual JIC. We can provide subject matter expertise, risk communication expertise, and we can tap into state and or CDC level subject matter experts if the situation warrants. So in summary, here's how a realistic scenario could play out. A local school district or a long-term care facility within your jurisdiction could have an outbreak of, in this case, blue spot fever. The school and the health department become inundated with calls from concerned parents or family members. Locally, you would make a determination to activate the incident command system. Incident command should determine the need for public information triggering the activation of the public information officer and or the joint information system. If you are still overwhelmed at that point, you have the option of requesting the Regional Medical Coordinating Center through a Tier 3 request. The RMCC then would activate to provide support for the impacted jurisdiction. For more information on the capability of emergency public information and warning, Check out your local FEP, contact the Western Wisconsin Public Health Readiness Consortium or the Northwestern Wisconsin Healthcare Coalition. Thank you.